morning. Perfect. My name is Alexis Bailey. I'm Tristan's second oldest sister. And just for the court's aware, if you just tell the court the order of the siblings. So my oldest sister is Brittany Bailey. Um, again, I'm Alexis Bailey. I'm the second oldest sister, followed by my brother Tegan Bailey, Sophia Bailey, and then Tristan was the youngest of the family. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. One hundred and fourteen. Of course. This jar now holds 114 stones, one for each of the 114 stab wounds that my sister had to endure. It was one hour and 42 minutes between when my sister was last seen and when Aiden Fucci was next seen, running out of the woods holding his shoes because his feet hurt. It's funny that such a simple statement can bring such anger. Aiden Fucci could show compassion for his sore feet, yet had nothing to leave for my beautiful sister. The number of questions I have for Aiden Fucci surrounding that night plague my mind. Did she see you coming at her with the knife? Or did you stab her while she wasn't paying attention? Did she scream out for help? Or was she para paralyzed with agony? Did she cry for my mother? Did she beg you to stop? Did you hear her lungs gargling with blood? Or did you see it in her face when she realized she could no longer breathe due to her collapsed lungs? What were her last words? Did you stay to watch her die? Or did you leave her there in agonizing pain as you ran away? How long did she suffer? Did you watch the life leave her eyes? Do you know the answer to any of these questions? Or were you too caught up in the thrill of the kill? The last time I heard my sister's voice was May 8th, 2021. I have racked my brains trying to remember the last words she said to me. Was it I love you? Was it goodbye? Or did we say nothing at all? What I do remember is her walking out that door. I have nightmares about that moment. In my dreams, I try to reach out and grab her, beg her to spend the night, anything to prevent what happened just hours later, yet every time the door closes before I can get to her. The memories of May 9th will forever be ingrained in my mind, body, and soul. 
to know I was awake and only 11 minutes away from my sister as she was being brutally murdered. Could I have saved her? I remember the vivid feelings of my body collapsing on the ground as the police informed us that they had found a body. Then, finding out hours later it was Tristan's body, I remember becoming physically ill and having a detective grip my hair as my body uncontrollably expelled everything from my stomach between my sobs. The pain I felt in every nerve as I watched my dad lying on the floor, screaming in a way no human should ever be able to produce. Our family broke that day, and I don't recognize any of us anymore. I have watched my parents going from believing that they were good parents to believing they were failures. I have listened to my parents question, what did we do wrong? What kind of mother or father was I not to protect my child? I have watched them overanalyze every conversation, every action, trying to figure out what they could have done differently. I've watched my older sister, Brittany, become unrecognizable with anger. I've watched my brother, Tegan, emotionally shut down and avoid the family due to the pain being home causes. I've watched my younger sister, Sophia, completely lose her childhood and be cast into the role of being a parent and being the resident therapist for my mother. I've seen the changes in myself, the responsibilities and burden that I have had to undertake because of the actions of Aiden Fucci. I am the one who had the responsibility of speaking with the funeral home and forcing my parents to decide which urn to put the, what remained of Tristan in. I was the one who had to pick her up from the funeral home and make that long drive home with her ashes. I have what remains of her beautiful blonde hair, now stained red, sitting in my house haunting me daily. I have had to become the safe place for my parents and hold space for their feelings. I have had to commit every detail of Tristan's murder to memory so that when any, ever and someone has a question, they need only ask and not be burdened with looking up the answers themselves through the hundreds of pages of court documents and police records. I bear the thoughts that one day the trauma we have all been through because of the actions of Aiden Fucci will cost the lives of my other family members. I have been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder. I have been unable to work at times during this process due to the trauma and PTSD attacks triggered by knives, blood, and open wounds. My relationships have suffered. My physical and mental health has diminished and my goals for the future have seemingly disappeared. Aiden Fucci didn't just take Tristan's life that day. He took everything from us. Our family, sense of security, laughs, health, and potential. For us, justice does not exist in this case, and closure does not exist in this case. Peace, understanding, and forgiveness will never come. The duty of this court today is to determine and weigh all the factors in this case, to decide the just sentence for the crimes Aiden Fucci committed with retribution and potential rehabilitation sadly being considered. The only justifiable, the only justifiable sentence in this case is a full life sentence. Anything short of that would be an insult to not only our justice system and community, but to our family and Tristan's legacy. Lastly, I would like to add my own stone to the 114 that I added for Tristan. This white stone represents my trust in people which died the day that Aiden Fucci chose to kill my sister. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Alexis. State would call Tegan Bailey.